We're checking in with our new police chief for a look at how he's increasing safety on Topeka streets. We'll meet arguably our furriest city employee helping speed up fire investigations. And we'll check in on the success of Topeka E311 that just celebrated its first birthday. It's the lowdown on T-Town coming at you right now. Hello and welcome into our fourth floor studio for another installment of Topeka On Point. I'm Susie Gilbert. Thanks for joining us. We start in our law enforcement center with a new police chief leading a re-energized police force. Chief James Brown joined the city in October and has made great strides so far. Overall, crime was down in Topeka in 2014, and to continue that trend, Chief Brown reorganized the department to get more officers out covering Topeka's streets. He's also recognized selfless acts of service in our community at a biannual award ceremony in January, where officers, civilian staff, and community members were recognized. Chief Brown reflects on his first few months on the job. Yeah, you know, my, my background, um, almost 30 years in the Department of Defense uh, through the United States Air Force and the Kansas National Guard and partnerships within the organization are, are um, of the utmost importance in order to move an organization forward. Um, you know, I also worked for a, for a large city organization in Kansas City, and there was a time to where the community really didn't work well together, and the, uh, the government, the city government, wasn't uh, working uh, hand in hand. Um, you know, obviously uh, things changed as years went on, and uh, with the partnerships that the police department and other organizations within the city government, when they can partnership together and work together, great things can come to a community. And I believe that Topeka, you know, right now is on the cusp of moving forward. I, I get excited when I talk to our elected leaders. I get excited when I talk to the city leaders about, you know, what their thoughts are on how to move Topeka uh, to the next generation, the next step. And, and I get excited by, by their excitement and it's kind of contagious. From Topeka Police to Topeka Fire, we got exclusive video of how the Topeka Fire Department is testing its new burn building. This new metal building replaces the old cement structure built in 1963. It has replaceable panels and will have a much longer lifespan than the old building. The old building could no longer safely withstand prolonged high heat. Sensors throughout this new structure allow trainers to monitor conditions inside the building during training exercises. And an artificial smoke system allows trainers to control the amount and the location of smoke within the structure. This mimics real world conditions. Movable maze walls can also be placed anywhere inside the structure as training obstacles and breakaway doors and windows can be reassembled. Firefighters did several controlled burns to prep the building for prolonged use. When the training situation turns to a real-world event, a four-legged fire investigator adds invaluable expertise. Webster is his name. He's the city of Topeka's canine fire investigator, and he sniffs out accelerants to help speed up investigations. His handler, Rusty Valentine, tells us how Webster gives us a nose up on investigations. He doesn't replace either my experience, my training, anything like that, or any of the other investigators that would call and ask for the assistance. He doesn't replace our training experience. What he does do is he gives us the ability to search a broad area in a relatively short amount of time. And he has depth. I mean, he can search uh, depth through fire debris where I would have to be on my hands and knees digging through fire debris to, to confirm or deny whether um, that ignitable liquids exist. And then if you can imagine um, a large building burned completely to the ground, um, you'd have to sift through all of that debris. Your training experience would tell you where it was, where there's a higher probability for it to exist. But what he can do is he can pinpoint that if it does exist, he can, he can do a broad sweep search, sw search a lot faster and um, a lot more accurate than, than we can on our own. 
Believe it or not, human trafficking is hitting close to home here in Topeka. We'll talk warning signs and how you can help after this. But first, here's your nugget from Nels. Spitting on Topeka sidewalks is forbidden, for it is against the law. All right, let's get started. Plenty of issues to deal with today. First on the agenda, the dangers of underage drinking. Dad, not again. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter when. Talk to your kids about underage drinking. Welcome back. January is National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. So to recognize the prevalence of this issue in Topeka, the city's community action team invited expert and Washburn professor Sharon Sullivan to speak. Sullivan says human trafficking happens all around us and is more common than you'd think. She shared warning signs and what to look out for. I think the most important thing people can do is educate themselves and there's lots of information out there. It's very easy to access. Um, and once you get educated, you will know what you need to do. You can also just pay attention to your neighbor. <laughs> pay attention to the people around you. Pay attention, and when you see things that aren't right, to tell somebody. I always say Polaris Project, the, the national hotline, 1-888-3737-888, is the, the best place to start because you can call them um, anonymously if you want and just say, I saw something I didn't think was right, and they'll investigate it. They'll contact local law enforcement and investigate it. For more information and to see how you can help, log on to polarisproject.org. You can also call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 888-373-7888 to report suspicious incidents. The city of Topeka's E311 system just hit its one year anniversary and thousands of Topekans have already benefited from the service. Nearly 8,000 people have had their questions answered or their service requests resolved in the last year. Remember, you can also use the large bank of frequently asked questions to look up an answer with the service. You can easily attach pictures to your requests or even enter a voice request if you're on the go. The service is totally free and available for download in the App Store. It's also available at topeka.org e311. Neighborhood Relations is celebrating the city's Topeka Opportunity to Own program that recently made its 425th homeowner. Toto helps moderate income and single people become homeowners through a partnership with Housing and Credit Counseling Incorporated. Brad Reef tells us how it encourages home ownership in Topeka's core. The Toto program is a very important program for us in that it encourages home ownership in all of our neighborhoods in town. But specifically, we try to encourage home ownership in the core part of the city. That helps to improve the health of our neighborhoods and in turn improve the health of the city. For more information on becoming a homeowner through the TOTO program, log on to hcci-ks.org. That's it for us today. I'm signing off. Thank you so much for tuning in. That's our time. Thanks for sharing yours. It's the lowdown on T-Town coming at you right now. Ah! <laughs> Two, one. Mm, I think this is serious. No, this is dog. Does Nels have any glue? January is, mm, maybe I wasn't ready. To log on to the, mm, sorry. Topeka's neighborhood relations is Facts. For more information, visit hcci-ks.org. <laughs> it's me on the phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>